We're in CS6. We're not going to use the new pattern tool for this one. I'm just going to show you how to make a simple argyle and set it up in two colorways. So I'll get rid of this over here. And first I'll probably set up these little colorways because they're kind of aggravating here. So if you want to line them up, you can always go in for your grid and you can set it to snap to the grid just like this and kind of have these kind of snap line them up and some of the colors are used in the other one so probably we could save a lot of time if we just took this and we group these we would group these with control G and then control V to paste another copy and we'll move this down and I believe this is the same and this has to be changed and this is the same and this has to be changed so we can select this and go here we can move this out and move this in probably we should ungroup this one though first if it's still grouped control shift G will ungroup it okay we can take this out actually we have the grid on and this out and put this in and then we can get rid of all of these okay and then we can um, group these always watch on the layer palette control G and back up so we have our two colorways. We go, um, well actually we, here we'll snap to the grid off and we will hide the grid. Okay, now we're going to go in here and we'll start out making a box. We'll make it five by five. Okay, and um, go like this and we'll turn it transform and we will rotate it 45 this box okay so we've got the box rotated 45 we're gonna look up on our transform tools we have the constraints off and we will make the width 0.75 and we will make the height 1 inch like this. Okay, so it's 0.75 and 1 inch and our constraints are back on. So we will put a color here. Got blue in it. So then we will click on it and we will go transform, move, and we're going to move it 0.75 which is the width. So transform, move, 0.75 in the horizontal hit the tab to go to the next field and put a zero in and hit copy so you have two and then put another color in okay so you have two of those so control G to group them now the height of these are an inch okay so we go transform move horizontal zero tab one inch on the height preview and say copy okay and then you could however you want to uh, change the color we want to change it like this so I reflected them like this so now we can group these okay control G and then we can take our arrow with the plus and take one control C control F 
Okay, we have an extra one in here, but I want to take it out of the group, so I take it out of the... Alright, so it's out of the group now, so I'll just put this on the side. Now I'll look at this. This is, I'll measure it, this is one and a half wide by two inches high. So I'm going to make this one and a half wide by two inches high. Okay, and I'm going to go to my stroke palette and I'm going to put a dashed line on, two points, and I'm going to click here where it aligns dashes to corners and path ends. Okay, so I will select, I will color this, make sure that's this color in here, the stroke. Oops, sorry, right there, dash line. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I have to align this. So I grab both items and I hit my align palette and I align it horizontal and vertical. Okay, now this is, again, if you look at transform, this is an inch and a half wide. I'm going to take another one of these and I'm going to move it Point seven five on the horizontal, tab 0 on the vertical. Okay, I'm going to move it half of the width with a copy. Okay, here, center one. Move minus point seven five preview, there, that's correct. Make a copy. Okay. So now I have these three, and I'll grab these three stitches here, and I will group them, Control G. Now I'm going to make a box that fits the width of the center, okay? It's an inch and a half by two. So I make a box, 1.5 tab 2 and I fill it with my other color and I move it to the back. First I select everything because I want to make sure it has to go behind this. So I pull it to the back. Okay, I, you have to have it outside of the group when you align it, otherwise it will not align correctly. Once you align it outside of the group, you can take that background and move it back in the group, just like I did now. Okay, so I have that background, and then I do Control c Control b to paste in back. I make it unstroked, unfilled, and then I take that unstroke, unfill from the back and do Control c Control f and move it to the front so that I can crop it. So now I select everything and I go to Pathfinder. Oh, before I crop it, this is what's going to happen. Uh, maybe I should just show you. Okay, I have a, a stroke here. I have to expand these strokes. If you don't expand these strokes, this is what will happen when you crop it crop, see you lose them. So I did a control Z to go back and now I'm just going to try to select just these uh, strokes and I go to expand appearance and then I go to expand and I take off fill and just leave stroke. I just have the stroke selected and now I select everything and I crop it. And there I've got this colorway. Here I'll get rid of this first one I had here. And I will move it up here. Okay, and I will put one into my palette. And I will make my sample.
and I will see what it looks like. It looks good. And then I can take this and move it here. Move these down. I can use my smart guides to try to line this up. Okay, now I'm going to recolor the bottom one and I'm going to uh, use select similar color. So I'll take my black arrow and I'll just lock these things on top. Lock, selection, and I'll go in here so they don't interfere and I'll grab this and I'll say select same fill and grab this and then I'll grab the navy here and I'll go select same fill and I'll hit the red. Now if I didn't lock those things it would have changed in the color chips on the top and the single repeat on the top. So I can unlock all so now it's unlocked. So now at this point I can drag and drop this in and I can take a swatch. Okay now this is not set for the cylinder. If I wanted it set for the cylinder I would have done it before I dropped the swatch in. I would have set the height to measure for the cylinder. So <clears throat> There it is. There's the example. Now if you want to, you can either set it up as a grid and lay it out that way or you can pull your guidelines down like this, you know, and you can plan it up to the guidelines. Here it is, guideline here. This would probably be moved over a bit. Probably you would want it evened out. So that's really important if you're going to have anything in a portfolio. So those are the things that I haven't spent a lot of time on on these videos, but that really, really uh, means a lot. So that's it. You would put your name in the lower right. The only other thing is maybe if you want to take these and put that little distort on it with the zigzag you would preview it and make it not too big and push these out. Like that. Okay. All right. And then you would save it. Save it as an AI. The color that I ask for is always RGB and when you save it as an AI, uh, always save it as a PDF compatible. And unless you're, if you're working in anything other than CS6, save it in CS6. If you're working in something lower, save it the lower one. Okay, so there's the hide guides. All done.